Hey everybody, it is Vex, uh, and this is a in new instructional video on how to install my treasure tables. Uh, recently somebody showed me a little problem that I wasn't aware of, so I'm going to make sure in this instruction video that we avoid that problem and I will specifically point it out. Now as of the time of this recording, it is Friday, June 18th, so uh, in a few days, SmiteWorks officially uh, is no longer supporting Fantasy Grounds Classic. Uh, so this video is going to be specifically for Unity. Uh, if you are trying to install the tables in Classic, you're going to do everything the same, except you're going to use a different extension. And uh, what I'm talking about is for my extension to work, you need technically four things for it to work. And the first thing is you need one of the extensions that somebody has made. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't want it to work with an extension and you just want to randle, randomly m roll off the tables, you don't need the extension. You can just roll off the tables, but the extension makes it work so much better. And that's why you're watching this video is you want to install the extension and get it to work with the extension. If you're just trying to roll on the tables, you just need the three modules loaded my my tables uh my trinkets and the dungeon master's guide and then they roll fine you don't need to do any other steps you just load those up roll on the table it works to get the extension run uh, working and make it one click and it's automatically picking the right uh tables for the right challenge rating and all of that that's what we're doing now so here on this product page, it lists both of the extensions. This is the one for Classic, and I'm going to make these links bold uh, to change them so they're easier to see. We're going to ignore that one, but if you are running it in Classic, that's the extension you need. Uh, uh, M. Gummelt uh, on the forums took Oleg, Olog's uh, extension, and he fixed it so that it works in Unity. That's the one we're going to use. So what you got to do is you got to copy this link, and the reason they aren't links that you can click on is because DMs Guild doesn't allow links, except to very specific sites. And you just paste it in your browser, and it'll take you specifically to the post where you click on this extension. And uh, you're going to put it in your Fantasy Grounds Unity extensions folder. And it needs to be named... Uh, correctly. Mine, it put an extra one at the end because it's already there. And if you've already downloaded it, it should download over the top of it and then once you've got that downloaded then uh, you are going to load fantasy grounds now I've already made a campaign I called it installing treasure tables and we've only got a couple of extensions selected over here most importantly we have the random treasure generator 5e random treasure generator is selected. I also have a font selected and uh, um, a theme. So, because I don't like the way the standard theme looks in Fantasy Grounds. So, we're going to go ahead and load Unity up. Now, over here on the side or at the bottom of the screen, I've also got this ta the, the this page up uh, just so you can see. Um, and if you need to see something there. Um, and let me scroll it down so you can at least see the links. I'll reset the, the zoom on it. So if you didn't catch that, where the, the links are, they're right underneath this like bulleted list. There are two lines right there. And the one you want for Unity is this one right here. And I'll leave that highlighted. Okay, so we've got our uh fantasy grounds up um the first time you load it, this should actually pop up on the screen and it'll be sitting there um and this is just to show you that you've loaded that extension for the first time uh and the first thing you're going to do is actually delete it so we're going to go into the into tables i clicked on tables over here on the side and then i'm going to select a group and i'm going to go to the random treasure generator extension group and i'm going to delete that and we don't want it 
because it'll default to that. So in my library, I have nothing loaded. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go treasure. And there's my random treasure tables. We're going to load those. And then the, we might as well load the other things we need. So we're going to load, we're going to search by trinket. And there's my trinket hoard. You need that one. And then the reason these are so cheap is because you have to buy the Dungeon Master's Guide. And I didn't want people to be spending five, six bucks on these tables and such unless they come back and they, you know, if you, if you love these, and you come back and you want to like buy them again under you using a, a set price to give me a couple bucks or whatever, that's perfectly okay. I don't want to charge people for something when they have to buy a $30 module from SmiteWorks to get it to work. Because most of them, like the tables that I'm using, are actually these Dungeon Masters tables. So. so when you've got all three of these loaded, make sure you are in the library. You click on my random treasure tables. You click on tables so that you've got this table window and this table window right next to each other. And then you are going to drag each of these ones that say challenge rating, blah, 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 into the window, the tables window uh, that you brought up initially. So five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17 through 99. You do not need to copy affordable armors, common weapons, expensive armors, mundane items, or uncommon weapons. You don't need to copy those ones. Just the ones that say, say challenge rating. Now, if you copy these a different way, for instance, let's go ahead and delete zero through one. This is just for instance, you don't, you don't need to do this if you just are following along. But if you went to my random treasure tables in this window, not using the library, but over here on uh, using this, and you made copies like this. Now in classic, those will work once you move them if you you know you bring this up and you you move that copy into the correct folder that'll work in classic however in unity they will not work unless you delete this parentheses copy parentheses and the space and then close it back up they won't work but they need to be exact and i i did not know that until recently we tested it and found out for some reason unity wants it to be exact so, but classic doesn't care. Classic just looks at the first part and they don't care about the parentheses copy at the end. So, uh, in my old video, my old instructions, that was the part that I didn't point out cause I didn't know. Now I know. And so I'm putting it in the video so that you guys know, but copying it from, by clicking on the, the, the tables here in the library and then bringing up the tables and then dragging copies in, you're not going to end up with the parentheses copy at the end and it's gonna work perfectly. And so we're gonna go ahead and test it now because it should work. We've done everything we need to, to set it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up. Oh, let's see. How about Lost Mine of Fandelver? So I'm gonna search by Lost Mine and I'm gonna load that module. And then we're gonna go right to uh, some encounters. So here is the Goblin Ambush encounter. And because I want my parcels, to show up in a specific place. Now, if I don't do anything, they'll show up in uncategorized. On the other hand, if I make a new group and then I edit and I call this uh, Vex Custom Treasure Parcels, that's a word, well, a, a mouthful, uh, then, and, and then I select, oops, not that one, select it. When we, when we roll this, when we click this button right here for the random, you know, generate random treasure parcel, it'll pop up here. On the other hand, I'm going to show you another trick, which is you see how these ones show up at the top, the all and uncategorized. I often like to put parentheses around mine so that they show up right here at the top. It's always the third option. 
But here's what's, what's going to happen. We're going to click on this, and it's going to start rolling, and you're going to see a bunch of dice roll over here. It'll create a parcel. The parcel will pop up on the screen, and it'll start adding items to it. And it rolls for each one of those goblins individually on my tables. And it rolls on the appropriate table, which goblins are somewhere between CR0 and CR1. Um, and you'll notice that you, you might be looking at this going, four goblins just gave them 12 EP and 20 silver and 19 copper and something called spider web. That's a ton of stuff. That is by design. I like it when it rolls a little bit more than what the players should get so that I can – sorry, my dog's trying to get in my lap uh, – so that I can then curate that parcel. For instance, I would maybe lower this to one EP, although I don't really like EP, so maybe I'll do one gold. And then I'm going to lower this down to like – yeah, I'll leave it 20 silver, but maybe I'll get rid of like half of the copper so there's like – nine copper and then i'll look at what this is okay this is a trinket it's a hand-sized spider web made of crystal set inside a hexagon hexagonal wood frame Eh, okay sure trinkets don't hurt i like trinkets i think they're fun and then i can take this parcel and i can do whatever i need to i can reward it to the players or i can share it with a specific player that that search the bodies whatever i need to uh and I'll show you a, a higher level encounter just so you can see uh, when it rolls for a lot of things. Let's see. We've got – oh, here we go. This is the final battle of the, the, of the Lost Mine of Fandelver. You've got some bugbears. Those are going to be like CR1, yeah. And then you've got some giant spiders, which are also CR1. And then you've got – uh, Nenazar, which is CR2, so it's going to roll on a different table. Um, and actually, just for fun, actually, let me, instead of doing that one, because those are still pretty low, let's go over here and load up, um, Tomb of, there's Tomb of Annihilation. And it's going to take a second, because that's a big module. There we go. Okay. So close this. And we're going to go specifically to the last chapter all the way down here to what should be. Uh, is this Justice Ararak? Yeah, that's Justice Ararak. Okay. So here we've got the Soulmonger and tentacles and the attribute like with a bunch of this stuff this is well that's a cr0 the attribute is cr13 though the law it's gonna roll treasure for that lava pit <laughs> the tentacles are each cr0 so is it really just everything cr0 let's try and let's find another one with maybe some more stuff in it um that's just a bunch of nothics I'm having I'm having problems here finding a a uh, a good one. Bunch of spine devils. Nope. Nope. Uh. <laughs> everything's like a, a little bit of the same. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to make our own encounter. How about that? So uh, let me go. Oh, I didn't mean to close encounters. Let's go into the library. We're going to, first of all, we're going to unload the ones we're not using. Unload Tomb of Annihilation. Unload Lost Mine of Fendelver. And let's just pull up the monster manual. And this is good to show that it works with sad adventures. It works with encounters that you build yourself. Uh, so close this. Let's uh, make a new encounter. And we're going to load up NPCs over here. Uh, okay, so we want a lich, first of all, because everybody wants a lich. And then we want... Um, so a beholder 
Yeah. Oh, we'll make it a beholder zombie. We'll go undead themed. And then uh, some skeletons. Let's do three skeletons. And let's assume that there's also two minotaur skeletons because they're a different uh, CR. And then uh, let's do uh, like three ghouls as well. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to... It's a CR 22 encounter. Uh, so the beholder is CR 5. It's going to roll on the CR 5 table. Each of the ghouls is going to roll on that 0 to 1 table. I think the skeletons will as well. The minotaur skeletons, though, will roll on the CR 2 table. And the lich is CR 21 and will roll on the 19 to 20 or the 17 to, to 99 table. So we're going to go ahead and call this undead encounter just so it has a name and then we're going to generate random treasure parcel and it's probably going to roll for i don't know we'll see i i'm going to guess two minutes <laughs> i'm going to see how long it rolls because there are quite a few enemies in there but it rolls for each one of them on the tables individually and just to give you an idea on the 17 to 99 table while it's doing this in the background we'll take a look at this you will notice that first it rolls a d100 and based on what it rolls it rolls it does and then rolls on all of these tables uh and some of them it rolls more than once um on that table the uh but, like, for instance, if you roll really high on this table, it's going to roll uh, four, up to four times on the individual treasure table for a CR 17+. plus. It's going to roll some mundane items. It's going to roll on the 5,000 gold gemstones table, on the 7,500 gold art objects table. It'll roll on the uh, magic item table I. It'll roll on magic item table H. It'll roll on magic item table E. It'll also roll a treasure hoard for a level 17 monster. It'll roll on the trinket hoard master table. Uh, and then it'll roll twice on the expensive armors table. So just one monster, you could potentially get a lot of stuff. It's still going. It has been a minute and a half. It's still not finished. We'll see what's going on uh, when it finishes. Uh, but you can see it's it's got a lot of stuff in here. And we're we're already at, you know, that I mean that just the platinum alone is ten oh thirty thousand now, gold worth, plus another twenty thousand here. Uh, it's a lot. Obviously, you probably want to turn this down. On the other hand, I mean, you're gonna need a party of about fourteenth eh, or fifteenth level that this isn't way too hard. I guess. I mean, I'm just judging. Cr twenty two. It's still going, and it's still adding stuff over here. Challenge. So it's on. I'm trying to look for when, where it's at on on the encounters, because it did start at the top. There, it finished. So it was just rolling for the skeletons there at the end. Uh, but we've got a ton of stuff in here. Some of it's going to be magic. There's a plus three hand axe right there. Um... The, da, 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 da. there's a bunch of potions a pearl of power ring of warmth oh, there's a whole bunch of rings ring of warmth ring ring of x-ray vision some a bunch of scrolls staff uh and there's a bunch of trinkets a bunch of gems and a bunch of gold and or well uh coins i should say uh now i love that it rolled all this stuff and it all is random but again i would go through and uh, curate this for instance i'd probably lower this to 2000 platinum for that encounter i would maybe just delete the two so there's one three three seven gold um maybe there's only 14 ep there uh you know maybe this gold and ep and silver is just like pocket change that was you know on the dead bodies whereas the 2000 platinum was in a chest or something uh and then i'd go through and i'd probably leave a bunch of the gems but I'm probably going to – I'd probably delete a bunch of this other stuff, even the art objects. Um, 
just because I don't like having too much stuff, but I like that it gave me options. Uh, the fish hook ring is a trinket. Get rid of that. Glass marbles, trinket. Uh, the gold circlet I'll leave there. The hand axe I'll leave there. Malachite moonstone. Uh, I think that's a trinket. Obsidian. Get rid of the painting. Uh, sure, I'll leave the pearl power and the cold resistance. Uh, no, actually, that's a potion. I'm going to delete the potions. Uh, I'll leave the ring. The rings there. The rings are cool. I'll get rid of all the scrolls. Because in my mind, I'm thinking for this particular encounter, there was a chest. And you don't throw scrolls in with a bunch of uh, like gold and jewels and rings and stuff like that. Um, I, I think I'd, maybe the silver ewers are there, but... Uh, I'm going to just make it one. Oops, not 12, one. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the staff. Unless the staff was planned and it's in the lich's hand, in which case I might leave it in there. Um, I mean, if I'm doing this earlier in prep and I see that staff, I'm like, cool, I'm going to give the lich a staff. In that case, I'll leave it there. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the this It's a, and this and that. And I'll leave all the gems. So you got a bunch of gems, and you got a gold circlet, a plus three hand axe, a pearl of power, a couple of magic rings, and the 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 uh, the lich had a staff. And then it it also contains two thousand gold. And we'll say maybe it had contained two thousand gold and one thousand or two thousand platinum and one thousand gold. And then all of the loose stuff is was on the other bodies you know maybe the skeletons were one of them had a bag with you know a bunch of silver and gold in it and maybe the beholder at some point swallowed a bunch of gold or whatever and they found it but this gives you a curated uh treasure parcel that you it's both random and curated and that's what i really like about these tables but that's how you install them that's how you get them working and i hope this video works much better and i get less questions because I think I explained absolutely everything. So have a great day.